I think we're live right about now and welcome back guys to episode 27 of the Tech Lounge where I'm joined by my co-host Kev from Tech Showdown. How you doing man? Doing good Brian, just been trying to get through the content as best as I can, how about you? Yeah, really good man, I just completed a few builds and also I have to do now the Windows 10 Creators Optimization Guide and I'll get that done hopefully like today or tomorrow. And then I got to head to Computex like tomorrow night. I leave at like uh, just before midnight. So I have to leave here like eight o'clock because I got to catch a flight from Brisbane, which is like an hour away. And then after that, we'll be giving you guys a lot of content at Computex. So that'll be really cool. I can't wait for that because I've never been to Taiwan before. And it's like one of the places that I really want to check out. So it's still on yeah, the man. definitely want to go list in terms of uh, places I want to visit. So can't wait for that. Really excited. Hopefully I can get you guys, because I'm leaving a couple of days early to set up, but I also want to go use parts hunting in Taiwan. Check out what the deal is there. See if there's any bargains. Just go hustle, see if we can build a computer and maybe even possibly give it away at Computex if there's going to be uh, any you know, uh, viewers there. So yeah. So yeah, meet up and give away a used price performance gaming rig. So that'd be really cool. Looking forward. To, I don't know, but it's crazy. I know, but um, worst comes to worst. If no one's there to give it away to, I'll just bring it back to Australia. Just take the case. You just yeah, ditch the case. That's usually the way. <laughs> then you yeah. just take the parts back with you. Rest in peace, board case. Yeah. Five dollar case. Rest in peace. <laughs> ah, so. then you're um, you've been nailing with these uh, used part builds lately. What are used GPU you liking at the moment? The 290s, 290Xs, or maybe something from the 900 series from NVIDIA, like a 980 or 980 Ti's. I see. You know, they're still you pay a little, quite a bit for them, but for the performance you get out of them, um, I think some of those on the used parts market can be quite a good deal. To, to be honest, man, there's so many different GPUs out there, and I think that's the main catch now, as opposed to like last year when I was looking at GPUs, there was a lot of GPUs that were coming up for sale at good prices. Now it's more like people definitely just want to offload any graphics card to get an upgrade to like a 470 or a 1060. I think they're very popular cards yeah. at the moment. And so well, now, yeah. the, now the 570. And so people just offload any type of GPU. And of course you've got the 1080 out there, which has dropped in price. You've got the 1080 Ti. And you know any graphics cards should be on your radar if you're looking to uh, do a pro use price performance build, like any graphics card. And so with that, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be looking at, you know, even like GTX 580, if you can pick it up cheap, GTX 570, 590, uh, six series cards, if you can pick them up cheap enough, there's just no limits to what deals you can get because I think the new GPUs have been revolutionary in ways that they've been so disruptive to the market, especially the used price performance market that you can just pick up deals for people who are like, no, I want to upgrade my graphics card. And like my friend, ages yeah. ago, as soon as the 1070 was released, I was like, dude, look at a look at a 970 in Australia. And he picked one up for dirt cheap. And I go, I go, I said to him, like, I found the deal for him on Gumtree. I found this deal, and I told him, I said to him, dude, I guarantee you, this guy is upgrading to a 1070 or a 1080. And he went and called up the guy, said, oh, I've got cash, you know, would you take $50 less than already his really low price? I think it was like 200 Australian dollars for a 970. Like he asked, he was asking, wow. two, he's asking 250. I was like, this was like ages ago too, as soon as those cards were released. And he said to the guy, would you take 200 cash? I'll come pick it up right away. And the guy was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> he just, just wanted to get rid of his 970 and like, that was just a really good deal because my friends, I think one of his old, his old graphics card died on him. And so, yeah, he, yeah he just, I just said to him, what's, he's like, what's the best price for us? I'll take a look for you. And so I generally, any graphics card that's just going out, someone wants to get rid of it to upgrade, that's where you're going to get a really good deal. So anything should be on your radar, really. And I know a lot of guys out there just want to build a price performance PC because it's a lot of fun. And that's what that's yeah. why that's why I got into it because it's just a huge amount of fun. Yeah, you can have the latest and greatest, but I don't know. Just building computers is just fun in general, especially can you can see what you can get out of them. Because a lot of people have been messaging me. They're like, "Dude, how do you get those settings out of that computer, out of that potato? Like, I can't even get you know this amount of frame rates like you are with this better gear." And it's about overclocking, like overclocking is a big part of it, especially on the older gear, like LGA 775, LGA um, 1156. 
So with those, yeah. with those, like you need to overclock because the gains to be gained on those platforms, especially the older ones, are huge. You're like talking like 50 percent gains, and not only that, just tweak your games as well. Like there's some settings that'll just absolutely hammer old school graphics cards with less VRAM, uh, less shaders on there. So really, just tweak everything in general. I guess that just comes from experience, maybe. I, I don't know, but mm. yeah. That's what I mean. When I sell computers, is they like all tuned, ready to go. So yeah, man, it's good. And your uh, your 1060 versus 580 video is interesting. When I was reading through the comments last night, some guy said, "Oh, you know, um, my GTX 580 doesn't get this kind of performance." <laughs> and I thought, "What? <laughs> what? Uh, GTX 580? Yeah, it doesn't get um, that kind of performance. Maybe if you put it under." Yeah. Uh, uh, LN2, yeah, liquid nitrogen. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe just. But um, that Nitro 580, it seemed like a quite a nice model of graphics card. I've heard good things about them. I mean, Sapphire in general does a pretty good job. Yeah, well, um, but did you like it? Yeah, like I liked the card. It was really nice. It was, the cosmetics were good. The performance was good. I don't understand how the performance can get a whole lot better because there was people in the comment section that are like, oh, you should have compared it to the Gaming X from MSI, the 580. It's like, man, I can't... I can't get these graphics cut like I can't just you know I can't afford to just go down and buy a gaming X for a comparison when I've already got a 580 mm. that's already apparently one of the best cards out there that's a good like, one man the yeah Nitro is a well, good like, model. I'm hearing yeah. in the comments some people are like oh man Sapphire is like one of the worst brands now it's like huh like a year ago apparently they were like the best AMD vendor so I've got no idea like what's going on sometimes in the comments I just think the best thing to do is sometimes ignore it but at the same time you've got really cool people in the comments people who get it people who are really nice i love reading the you know the smart comments i guess so i I don't Mm. know at the end of the day i thought the comparison was really fair i overclocked both the graphics cards and the 1060 just did it for me that was just my my opinion my recommendation and i think the biggest thing was people like oh you missed free sync and yeah i did so that was just something I, i glossed over and i guess it's probably uh because I just don't use either. Like I actually had a G-Sync monitor on my 4K monitor and I just never used G-Sync either. I just really, I like to uh, poll high frame rates and drop graphics settings. Cause like I, I like to play competitively, even though I'm not like a pro, I still enjoy playing the best I can play at. So I've got like a Logitech G302, uh, some of the lowest input lag out there. I've got a really fast monitor. And so with that, I like to get the highest frame rates polling to my monitor and then also have no free sync or G sync enabled because the input lag is again, a little bit lower. So I guess that's just, I guess might be a little bit of a bias as a reviewer, but again, every reviewer is going to have a bias, like depending on how they want to test things and what they do. So that's why I said, go check out Steve's video, man. He's got a different opinion. Like it's, it's important for people to go grab as many opinions and like which reviewer they align with the best. So for instance, if people... I don't think it's so much of a bias. I think it's more of like a different people, depending on how they test different things can come to different conclusions. But the, the fact of the matter is both cards are very close in all the reviews, my review, which will be coming out either today or tomorrow. Yeah. The cards are so, so close together that it's very, um, there's no clear winner like when we test with other things where you can clearly see which one is better. That's just not the case with um, these graphics cards. They're so, so close together in terms of price and performance and and in many other ways. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And uh, we just got a donation from Alex Bevan. Oh, thanks, and Alex. Said, thanks for Follow. all the good info. Keep yeah. it up. Oh, yeah, no worries, man. Like, that's what I mean. Whenever you come here, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I never sugarcoat. I just say it how it is. I do my testing. I just give an opinion. And that's what I mean. If people can't respect that, then seriously, they're at the wrong channel. Like, just go head off into yonder. I mean, I'm always going to have an opinion. I'm always going to treat my viewers like friends and that's what i'm saying if i was recommending a gravis card to a friend it would be personally the 1060 over the 580 and that's just me like you can go ask other people for their opinions and it's because of my testing and my testing was apples to apples it always is it will never change i'm always going to test two gravis cards 
both out of the box settings and now overclocked. I like to do both to get a bit of insight. And honestly, I think the 580s have been pushed to the brink. They're essentially 480s refreshed with higher, with more aggressive overclocks. And with that, you gain even less overclocking headroom. And so mm. I'm going to look into undervolting the card because a lot of people want to see how they perform when you undervolt them and see what kind of performance per watt you can get out of the card. But other than that, like we're talking like the 1060, I put that in and I can overclock it and the it's really good when it's overclocked. The performance is insane. So I don't know. The, yeah. 10, the 1060 just did it for me. That was just me. Like, yeah. If I had to pick two, I'd pick the 1060. So I don't know. Take it how it is. Yeah. It's just... A, <laughs> yeah. No, they're, they're very close together too. Very extremely close. Yeah. And um, you could make a case for either... Uh, from my testing anyways uh, that I've already done you can really make a case for either GPU it's that close together I know it's just crazy though some people in the comments just go off man it's like it's like you literally pooped in their breakfast and like and all we did was make a video like really in essence we just made a video yeah I mean I think the average gamer you could take out their whatever GPU they had and put in the other one and they probably wouldn't notice because the performance is so close together. Exactly. Um, if it was in a specific game, maybe that one does much better than the other. But for the most part, the average gamer, there's not enough difference with them. Once you add together, you know, ten game averages and that, it's very, very close. That most people wouldn't notice. But it's very good in the sense that um, uh, it's good competition at this price point. That both of the cards are very similar. Yeah, um, so exactly. they're kind of fighting for that best price type thing and depending on where you look and the country you live in it seems to go one way or the other some places the 580 is cheaper than a 1060 depending on the model you know i'm talking about equivalent models um and then other places it's the reverse here in new zealand it's pretty close very close um so mm. that it just depends on where you live as well that will also influence your position um, on which one you will go for, but yeah, it's quite a cool. It's quite cool to see the competition at this, uh, at that value for money price point that the majority of gamers will be buying at. Yeah, I mean the bottom line is though, if you bought, that's what I said. If you bought either Gravis card, you 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 haven't made a wrong choice. They're both great Gravis no, cards for you, the money. Both I mean, good. Yeah, yeah, it's just, I mean, when it comes down to it, it's such a really fine line. But at the same time, I'm still just going to make my recommendation. Like, it's not the end of the world, guys. It's just a graphics card in the mid-range, and they perform very similar. So For those videos, you can never sort of win on them. you got to expect that people will get yeah, uh, yeah. grumpy to a certain extent, but it's just because of it's NVIDIA versus AMD. It's always going to be like when we do when Vega comes out, yeah. when we do 1080 Ti versus Vega Nova or whatever, then it's going to be the same sort of thing people will probably go yeah. crazy and then say all the rest of it but um it'll just be it's just how it is man yeah. <laughs> after all these years it's just you just deal with it but um oh you do the, yeah you do yeah yeah yes yeah <laughs> so i'm looking forward to your video so you have the 1060 versus the 580 kev's gonna have a showdown yeah. of his own so make sure you check that out but we got up here first off the radeon vega nova eclipse and core reportedly launching on june the 5th so right after Computex is, um, so right after Computex finishes, essentially they're planning to launch this graphics card. Now there is an AMD booth at, I think they're announcing it on May thirtieth at like ten thirty in the or ten o'clock in the morning. So there is an AMD meeting at Computex, and that'll probably be where they announce Vega. So May thirtieth, guys, keep your radars up. You will get uh, official first. Oh, 31st. 31st yeah. at 10 a.m. Okay, yeah, 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 you're right. Yep. 31st at 10 a.m. So we've got uh, AMD should be announcing Vega right then and there. It'll be huge. I'll be covering it. I'll be at Computex live, baby, covering that stuff for you. I'll hopefully give you guys the... Um, I'm I'm hoping to get the first video out on YouTube, but then again, it'll be in, in probably not realistic because you have guys on their smartphones texting the deets and then being like, yep, that's confirmed. Run the story. Like they might have like two like a guy lined up two different stories and whatnot launch it <laughs> hillary win, lin, wins the election trump wins the election get those two stories ready launch <laughs> yeah well i mean I'll, so. I'll make a video that day um after this 
announcement goes through so i'll be waiting um to read all the details about it and then i'll make a video about it but uh yeah, yeah so it's looking quite interesting so so the pricing they're saying is 599 for the nova which is going to be the uh top um vega gpu the big boy then 499 for the eclipse which is going to be the middle vega gpu and then 399 for the core which is going to be kind of like the fury nano in a lot of ways so pricing wise if you're not aware that means that the nova will sit between the 1080 and the 1080 ti 1080 sits at about 499 1080 ti sits at 699 so it's sitting between the two of them the eclipse will sit exactly at the same price point as the 1080 and the uh core will be sitting at that 1070 price point Definitely. So interesting, interesting that they've structured it like this. The other thing that we notice if we look at their graph, and these are just rumors right now, but it seems correct from everything we've gathered, is that it's looking like a copy of what they did with uh, the Fury lineup. So you had the Fury X at the top, which is the big, powerful, all the bells and whistles GPU. Uh, then you had the just plain fury and that was an air cooled graphics card remember the fury x was purely liquid cooled the fury was the air cooled version and that had fewer stream processes but it still had all the power and everything enabled um, full power but just with cut down gpu in terms of stream processes and then you had the nano uh, which was it had all the stream processes but it had the speeds cut down the power cut down and other things and that looks like the same case as what we're seeing here. You get the full power Nova, the Eclipse will be air-cooled, and that will be um, trimmed down in terms of stream processes. And then you'll get the core, which if you were just looking in terms of stream processes, you'd say, why is that one cheaper? But that will have lower power limits, and it will um, uh, mm. have lower speeds. So in terms of performance, the Eclipse will still be better. It's not... I, I see a lot of you guys just think it's just purely about the CUDA cores or stream processes. There's more to it than just that. It is a good indicator for the most part, but it's not the be all or end all. There's more to a GPU's performance than well, than clock just speeds. that. Clock speeds. Yeah, huge, clock speeds so... pay a big, big, big thing in it, and the power as well. If it's going to be power limited, the core model, then. Um, that will hold it back quite a bit as well just like what we saw with the nano so this is looking pretty crazy 12.8 teraflops um on the nova that is not mucking around that's a powerful gpu no matter which way you look at it that thing is gonna absolutely haul and the memory bandwidth there um at 410 that's more than 1080 ti or the titan um xp um so a lot there too very very high-end uh, uh gpus very yeah so they're looking really good i'm worried about the clock speeds though i mean we saw that rumor well not really a rumor i mean it was an official score loaded into the database so could that possibly be the core at 1.2 gigahertz i don't imagine this one at 1.6 gigahertz versus 1.5 i mean that would outperform the vega eclipse i mean looking at this yeah it just it looks a little bit weird how they've got this graph i mean you'll get more details when it's out on 31st of may but i think you're right like this will be a the vega core will be like the nano and of course the yeah. clock speeds is interesting that's i guess the eyes are all on the clock speeds at the moment but if the vega nova is confirmed at 1.6 gigahertz then we can look at performance that will be better than a 1080 but less than a 1080 ti and i think at the price point, that's where it's going to hit. Uh oh. Uh, there is uh, a yeah, man. Just sorry. This is uh, my internet, guys. So we <laughs> we dropped out. Yeah, um, that's a uh, streams. Tel streams back up now. Telstra yeah. internet, guys. Um, this is Australian internet. This is what I got to deal with on a daily basis. So. <laughs> So if it cuts out again, um, I'm, I don't know. It just, just dropped for like a for like a second, but yeah. yeah, it seems okay now. So, so that's fine. Fingers but, um, crossed. The, Fingers yeah, crossed. I mean it, it's 
Yeah, it, it seems exactly like what I predicted with the Nova. I mean, I said weeks ago, maybe even like a month ago, that I predicted that the top Vega chip would sit between the 1080 and the 1080 Ti, and that's looking like exactly where AMD's positioning it, because but I just saw such a large performance gap between the 1080 and the 1080 Ti that hmm. that would be where I would want to put a card right between them for those people that maybe want more power than a 1080, but they, <laughs> I guess, don't want to jump as high as the um, the 1080 Ti, and I guess the Nova will come right in there. More interestingly, I think, is the Eclipse, because that will be the same price as the 1080. So you've got to hope that the performance must be... It doesn't look like a big drop down in performance compared to the Nova, but... Um, yeah, let's hope that that thing, maybe if they come out with some crazy extreme models of that, the different companies do, because it'll be air-cooled, um, there'll be something like that. So so hopefully uh, yeah, we I see mean, that. Oh, Jim, oh, just a sec, Brian. Jimmy O donates as well, and he said, made you look. Okay. <laughs> oh, and someone else said, no. Telstra sucks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Australian <laughs> compost apparently. <laughs> oh, well, it's it's a sad life, guys. It's hard life when you got two megabits per second uploads. That's two megabits, so that's like uh, it's rough. <laughs> you know, it is rough. Yeah, I am dealing yeah. with a uh, tough internet here. So uh, we've got yeah, like so. That's what I was worried about. That fire strike score, though, when we saw that at one point two gigahertz, effectively, that was not a real good indicator. I mean, we still have to see some driver updates come through. But I think the performance of these cards will sit a little bit above a 1080 and more so... The, like, the 1080 Ti is a lot faster than a 1080. It's like, what are we talking about? 30% yeah. on average. That's 30 a, to 35, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a big gap. And so I think that this is just theory crafting, just based on numbers I've seen and the clock speeds at 1.6 gigahertz. I can see it maybe beating a 1080 by 5 to 10%. And that's their flagship card. This is just, again, I know a lot of people are going to go ape shit, especially some of the AMD fans, but that's just the numbers that we've seen so far based on this spec sheet here. So, I yeah, I think, that, I mean, the 1080 Ti was a beast. It's a massive graphics card. And it does, of course, consume a lot of power, especially when overclocked. Like, make no mistake. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. what they're doing with the Vega Nova. Are they going to be slapping a water cooler on it like they did with the Fury out of the factory? I, I would expect so, yeah. And of course, the HBM2 so. is going to be impressive as well. The Eclipse is going to be an interesting model. That'll be a really cool model to see, like if you can get the clock speed similar to the Nova and then see what you can do with that. So yeah, Kev, um, Kev has a vehicle inspection too. So I've got the Telstra internet dropout and now Kev's got a guy coming around to look at his car, which was meant to happen an hour and a half later. So that's a, all bets are off, guys. <laughs> so yeah, Vega, I'm really looking forward to it. Of course, I want to actually do a full image comparison between uh, like 10 different games. So I'm just going to look at a screenshot on 10 different games at the same sections of the map, look at static parts of the map, do an apples to apples comparison where we go in and pixel peep and uh, really just report this across 10 different games. I think you guys would love to see that. I want to, That's one thing I'm curious to see with Vega when I up, like, get one of these cards in, test it against the 1080, 1080 Ti and the 1070 because this is where this lineup will be specifically targeting to hit and then give you guys not just the uh, frame rate comparison, not just the FPS comparison, but also going a bit more in depth and looking at things like image quality as well. Same settings out of the box, out of the factory. You install this Gravis card. This is how the image is going to look without tweaking any settings because, of course, the average gamer is just going to get a graphics card, in my opinion, drop it in there and then play games. So I think that's important to look at that side of the fence with the performance figures too. So I look forward to doing that for you guys with Vega. I'm going to wait till Vega comes out because again, it's a high-end graphics card and it's going to compete with another high-end graphics card from NVIDIA. So hope to see you guys looking forward to that comparison too. And now we've got the, another rumor here. So Tech Power Up of, uh, I think they originally released this uh, rumor. So this is just more sort of fuel to the Vega fire and just to back it up and sort of their theory crafting as well um i did read this article and i thought the 1070s performance can be easily overclocked to reach a 1080 is not 
that valid. I think a 1070 like <laughs> overclock to the brink doesn't even match a 1080 like out of the box. Like I think this time around the 1070 can't like the 970 you could overclock it and get 980 uh, performance, but 1070s they they're kind of still a little bit behind a 1080 even when you overclock them. That's just my experience. So uh, we got here the 14. Yeah. Sorry, you want to add some? You want to add? Oh some? no no no. New Zealand sense <laughs> onto this metal? No, no, I was just trying to um, uh, get back up to speed. Sorry, I yeah. Brian just had That's an okay. interruption. But uh, um, yeah, no, I just wanted to uh, add one more thing when we oh. were talking about the Vegas okay. skews was yep. the um, the TDPs at 275. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty decent if I remember back. The Fury X... Fury X was at 275, I believe, as well. So um, it's the exact same, but, I mean, the 1080 Ti is at 250. So that's quite close. But how much do you think um, HBM2 is going to help by comparison to what, say, the Nova will be going up against if it if it is like that? It'll be wedged between two in, uh, NVIDIA GPUs, which have GDDR5X. I mean, like, is not, HBM's you know, uh, reported to be more efficient, but at the same time, doesn't it contribute to the overall die heat a little bit more? I Like, I haven't really looked into it too much, but... Yeah. Um, so, well, it's a huge die because of the interposers and stuff like that, so I think... Yeah, and that does um, contribute to the heat on the die per se, so I'm really curious to see how the TDP will perform with a cooler in the real world. That's something I'm actually looking forward to testing with Vega and the HBM2. Uh, we know from the Fury that that was actually a pretty, it was a hot running card. Like, you know, they were hard to keep under control, both the Fury and the um, Fury X. So the Nano, mm. of course, being cut down as much as it was in terms of speeds, it didn't pose much of a problem. But again, a lot, I, how these things overclock as well is remains to be seen too, guys. So much of it's up in the air, but it looks to be like it will be a competitive lineup. It's just I think it was. It's very late. That's that's all I'm going to add. Very late for AMD to be releasing this lineup if it's competing similar to the 1070 and 1080 and 1080 Ti, like and then coming under the 1080 Ti, of course. So. I think yeah, that... to a to a, to a, yeah yeah to, to a certain degree, I would say that that's true. Um, I don't particularly remember the Fury X personally from my testing being a particularly hot graphics card. Um, but it was underwater though. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, like... yeah, yeah. It was. It was. So that may that may. Have, but I mean, I've tested uh, 1080s, which had the like the MSI Seahawk, okay. I believe it's called, and stuff, and they they had liquid cooling, and it was about similar. So I um, did you the yeah. question? Though, did you feel the radiator as well? The heat coming off the radiator? Because I mean, I tested a 980 Ti with a water block, a 120 mil rad. And I overclocked that to the brink. I got some impressive figures out of it, but the radiator was heating up as well, like quite getting quite. Oh, the radiators warm. get hot. Man. Yeah, when I, I mean, did the Pro Duo videos, because so, I couldn't mount the, I couldn't mount the radiator in my case because it wouldn't yeah. fit. So what I did is I just left the door of my case off and had the radiator point at me. Yeah. And it was at winter, man. I just play a game with the Pro Duo, and the the radiator was just blowing hot air on me, man. It was like <laughs> having a nice little air heater next to you. It was all good. There you Get go. me nice and warm, so. Yeah. But so. it got exceptionally hot. The radiator, mm. you like, if you were gaming for like an hour, if you try to pick that thing up, oh boy. Wow. Would you know about hot. it? Okay, so that was on the radiator. Yeah, they got. Cool. Okay. Well, that was on a Pro Duo though, so that was pretty kind of ridiculous. But um, okay. The you know there was two Fury Nanos on that thing, so it was quite ridiculous. But yeah, um, you know that 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 will be interesting and hbm2 will be quite cool it'll be a very good selling point for um vega as well just from a marketing perspective having such advanced memory and not having the drawbacks of the fury remember guys that was restricted to four gigabytes and that was yeah that uh, was for actually... a lot of people that was like a deal breaker so yep. the fact that you're going to be able to go all the way up to 16 gigs uh with the nova apparently um is gonna dispel that very nicely uh even eight gigabytes right now honestly i think that's a good amount but hey if you can have 16 or you want 16 then 
more power to you. But but eight's still a solid amount right now. Yeah, uh, even if you're gaming at four K like I do. On that note, though, AMD are releasing a new caching technology with their GPUs. I think this lineup more specifically, where they use memory more efficiently and they do get higher mm. frame rates. I believe there was a Tomb Raider benchmark where they showed the performance being increased with just two gigabytes of VRAM. It went up quite substantially. Uh, and with that, there's also another rumor of 14 nanometer plus with Vega 2.0 to compete with Volta in 2018. Again, this is where it starts to go too much in the rumor mill. Um, you know, like we, yeah. we haven't even seen Vega yet and they're talking about the next lineup of Vega 2.0 <laughs> cards. Uh, I'm just going to personally say like with this article, it does, a lot of it makes sense. Of course, AMD will want to get on a more refined node process and be more competitive. And I think Vega 2.0 could be 14 nanometer plus with higher clocks, better yields. Uh, but again, this article is really too much too soon. Um, you know, like they even go on like this is when you know you just got to jump off this article where they're putting up like hypothetical situations of if this happens for and this happens and this happens if Vega's not, you know, if the clock speeds are higher and then Volt is not that good and it's just a bit too much for me this article though with the 14 nanometer plus so it does like some of it makes sense but of course I think we're just way too like this is just going way too deep for me how about you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting, but yeah, there's not much we can take from this aside from the fact that it looks like AMD will be going to seven nanometer with a Navi, yeah. um, whereas uh, you were saying earlier that Nvidia will be going to twelve nanometer next. With Volta, uh, so yeah. Nvidia, will, yeah, will be going from twelve nanometer down to twelve where AMD will be going from 14 to 7, apparently, which I think is quite ambitious. Um, oh, that's yeah, good. Uh, it depends. It depends when it will be coming out as well. I mean, when Volta comes out and when, when this comes out. But, yeah, you, you put it put it right. This is Vega isn't even out yet, and people are looking towards this. So let's just see how <laughs> Vega goes, see how good the architecture is and yeah. how what kind of performance. I mean, as as we can only talk about what we what we think based off those specs on paper but at the same time we don't know actually how good it's going to go um in certain games and that so i think it will be interesting when we start testing vega to see actually how much performance it has and yeah. it could be more than we thought could be less than we thought could be right around where we think but as i said my prediction right now that top card i would say is the Nova will be 10% more powerful than the 1080 and it will be 20% slower than the 1080 Ti. So it'll be almost in the middle of those two graphics cards. And once maybe drivers get good for it, maybe it'll go up to 15% over a 1080. Yeah. But um, so it'll be dead smack bang between those two. But that's my prediction right now. Uh, and that's what I would think. But um but uh, what's your prediction before we... Because we're almost there. Vega's almost okay, so out. So what's your sort of final with, prediction okay, for so Vega? With the, with the 14 nanometer plus, right? This is, like I was saying, this one's way too far in the future. But with like with our show and stuff, we like to make sort of short-term predictions. I mean, look at the Ryzen 5 1600 B350 combo. I predicted that like a month before it was even released or even before Ryzen was you released. Were, you were dead right. Dead on the money, man. <laughs> dead on the money. I said yep. like... Yeah, because it was rumored to come with a stock cooler, um, six cores, 12 threads, the price that it was rumored to come in at. And then I was like, well, you got B350 overclocking, you got two less cores, it's going to produce less heat than the eight core. This one looks like a no brainer. This one looks like it'll be the king of price performance. And came out, it was. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we also looked, I, I saw the dual d die design. I said, maybe that'll introduce some latency, you know, and I got called an effing idiot and stuff like this in chat. And, yeah, but it was right, and yeah. So, <laughs> with yeah. predictions, okay. So my prediction is going to be that Vega will be released, and it'll be a little, hopefully, a little bit in front of a uh, 1080. The the Nova I'm predicting will be about five to ten percent faster, and mm. I'm thinking more along five percent because it's an infant graphics card lineup, and so that's where I think they're going with the Nova. Uh, and of course, as driver optimizations come in and refinements come in, you'll see performance improve over time. But 
that's my prediction so yeah just, i mean i mean people in the chat are saying that 4096 stream processes at 7, 17,000 megahertz which um we're seeing here on the article we were just on said it was going to be 1.6 but they that may be a base clock there may be a boost clock or something as well um versus the 1080 has 2000 oh you can't like basically okay yeah that 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 doesn't but but guys look at the rx 480 slash 580 compared to a 1060 if you're doing it if you're going to go like that look at the difference there um Mm. there's a huge difference in stream processors versus cuda cores they're different they're completely different architectures it's not they're completely different so it's not you can't just compare them like that it doesn't it's not that easy if it was we could make pretty much like bang on predictions based off different things yeah um but it doesn't work like that the 1060 is nowhere uh like like it it yeah, it okay, just doesn't okay. work like Okay, so basically yeah. you've got two different, radically different GPU architectures. They are completely different. Yeah. Like, okay, comparing yeah. Maxwell to Pascal is kind of a little bit valid because they were using a similar, um, they were getting similar gains per mega or per hertz. So per clock performance mm-hmm. was still pretty similar there. So you could kind of make some predictions that were sort of a little bit shaky, but you can't say, okay, the NVIDIA GPU's got this many CUDA cores, and the AMD's got this many stream processors at this clock speed because they're two radically different architectures that work in different ways to get different, you know, to get the FPS that you see on your monitor. So what you can do though is say how much of a difference are these stream processors going to be compared to the RX 580? And so you can look at those and you can say, is AMD yep. going to gain a huge increase from their architectural updates or their improvements? And that remains to be seen. No one's got their hands on Vega just yet. So that's the one thing that I'm curious to see is how much of an improvement their architecture makes over their previous GCN-based architecture. So that's one thing I am looking out for. Uh, of course... Yeah, yeah. That's a good. That's a really yeah. good point. And that, that the, the thing is, like, with our testing, as we said, we talked about earlier, with the, the how similar the 580 and 1060 are in terms of performance... You have to remember that the 1060 has uh, 1,280 CUDA cores to the 580's 2,304 stream processors. Yep. There's difference in clock speeds and architecture and everything else. So the two don't. So people are saying, well, the 1080 has so much less CUDA cores than the the Vega's stream processors. Yeah, yep, that okay. that does it's count right, for careful. a bit, but it's not that. Kev, we've already talked about it, bro. It's okay. We can move on. <laughs> so the next article uh, we got just, here. Yeah. <laughs> the next article we got up here is Intel is licensing AMD's graphics cards. Like this was the one done, and in the title here it was a done deal. I mean, it's pretty, you know, you're pretty courageous just to say it's a done deal, and then Intel comes out and refutes it and says no, it's this is just a rumor, and basically the stock prices go up, and then they come crashing down. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah the old rumor mill throwing all the traders off so i mean i this is just this is probably one of the craziest examples because it dropped a crap ton man that was a huge drop for a, a stock of amd's volume that's a huge drop off a rumor of a cross licensing agreement now what nvidia and intel and amd and intel are doing is anyone's guess again this is i mean man this is going a bit far with the rumor mill but i mean a done deal like saying that in the title man i mean you could be up for some litigation here like damn like you you can't say it's a done deal in your title of your article because it's not a done deal so man i mean i fudzilla could be up for a lawsuit with that because i know with financial stocks you can't you can only give opinions you could say um possibly you know also you got to reword that man it's not a done deal so anyway it comes out it's refuted and then the stock prices crash like i feel sorry for the guys who read that rumor and like oh my god this is another gold mine for amd stock then they bought it and then look then when it goes down to ten dollars and 97 cents a few days later they're like literally shitting themselves so 
Oh, man. I, I mean, it's always risky betting on a rumor, but the yeah, I mean, this would have been good for AMD if it was to <laughs> be true. It would give them a lot of extra revenue. <laughs> I gotta say something. Buy on the rumor, sell on the news. Just when it's not Fudzilla. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, if you did that, um, you you maybe would have been okay. I mean, if you if you were holding on AMD stock and then it came up after this and you sold. Um, that day or something then maybe you would have been all right but it didn't go up i mean what it was trading at what 11 50 a share and then after the news it went up to about 12 50 to 12 70 at its top so it only went up a dollar per share so it's not as as huge as I mean that that's still an increase but it's not like that's that's still it's still big for just a rumor from you know internet yeah sites, for like, just a little you, thing yeah. yeah exactly so i mean one thing you can see from this though like what to do from here with these stock prices take a look and you can see now amd stock are volatile so if you're game and you do like trading stocks amd might be a hot stock to trade if you're looking for short-term gains because i mean this one here this is sitting shallow but i guarantee you after the announcement of vega this stock will move a bit so you can maybe if you feel like it's vega's going to be really good you can bet on the stock market make a gamble if you feel it's going to be bad and you know someone who shorts the stocks you can put on a short so it's up to you but yeah uh so basically anyway intel the more news on this though is intel apparently they really they have to have a cross licensing agreement with either amd or nvidia and apparently in March this year, the cross licensing agreement finished with NVIDIA. Yep. So they're looking for their next cross licensing agreement. Now, the details of that license is very, you know, I don't think we'll be able to read it. Um, and of no, course, okay. how long after that ends, how long can they continue to use those products that were made? Because they've already mm. got like they've already got their architecture designed for their next products. So once that's yep. finished and designed, they can still use that for the ongoing sales. So for instance, the core whatever's next out, Coffee Lake is finished, it's already done, then they don't have to worry about a cross-licensing agreement until they're ready to make the next architecture. So what they're going to do is anyone's guess, but again, an aggressive article like this, like a done deal, is kind of a little bit, I don't know. It's, you know, so very aggressive. Yeah, I mean... Uh Intel and NVIDIA aren't exactly getting along, are they? Yeah, and so there was a lawsuit as well. NVIDIA sued Intel and got rewarded like $1.5 billion or something. So it was it's a big, a lot going on in the tech world. But again, in the world of business, I don't think that would stop Intel from still doing a cross-licensing agreement with NVIDIA. And of course, they've got the option to go with AMD. It's just nothing's concrete yet. So, yeah. Anyway, next on the news here, something has awakened, ROG, and literally it's like 30 seconds of a Ryzen logo. So I watched it, I was like, okay, and a little laptop in there. So uh, apparently ASUS is tipped to release their, or at least showcase their Ryzen laptops at Computex. So they're using Ryzen chips, which would be really cool. I really like what Ryzen is about. I think it offers great price performance, but of course, in a gaming laptop, I mean, I, yeah, I honestly, at the moment, I'm not really liking any gaming laptop except the one that Steve reviewed. He did look at that a, a gigabyte one with the, uh, that was very compact. I did like that. Like I like the compact laptops that have like maybe a 1070 in there or 1060. I think they're the ones that I could see myself buying if I wanted to get a laptop, which I don't need. So how about you? <laughs> No, I, I like that. And this would be good for AMD. This would be really, really good because mm. Intel has had a monopoly for um, ages. Well, they had it pretty much on the CPU market, uh, yeah. the uh, desktop market, I'm sorry, uh, as well, but but much more so on the laptop. So this would be very, very good. And this is what a lot of people were waiting for, mm -hmm. um, for Intel, uh, AMD to hit back in the gaming laptop market. Uh, so it'll be good for them, but we'll have to see what they're what it's going to be um well i i really like ryzen i mean ryzen's a really good 
thing for the scene. Like if you're into tech, you've got to, even if you're an Intel guy, you've got to respect Ryzen. I mean, I've been loving the Ryzen 5 1600 lineup, the 1700. I'm waiting for the R3 lineup as well. They've been absolutely killing it with that lineup of CPUs. It performs really well and they are doing what they promised to do. I mean, you've seen them go and optimize games like Dota 2, like CSGO, and get legitimate gains for those people who were worried about that. I was worried a little bit when I initially tested it in Dota 2. I was like, damn, the frame rates are way behind the Intels. But I go back and test it more recently, and you can see that the frame rates are really good now in Dota 2. So Ryzen's mm. really, really gone up to the next level. It's, it is doing what it was promised to do, and that's be a really good price performance CPU. I'm loving Ryzen at the moment. I don't think you'll meet someone who's got a bad thing to say about the price performance on Ryzen. And if you do, I'd like to speak to them and find out why and where, because I think it offers exceptional performance for the dollar and you get the free overclocking. You don't pay for overclocking and you get an included cooler that's actually decent. So just all those things coupled together really make Ryzen a really good choice. Uh, and now to see how that hits in a laptop though, of course, we've got a different kettle of fish. Uh, yeah. Of course, the, uh, with that said, the performance per watt is still really good with Ryzen 2. That's another thing that AMD did do well with Ryzen. So performance per watt's pretty good. Of course, with laptops, it comes down to lower clock speeds, better pri uh, performance per watt. So I think they've got, a, they've got a good solution for laptops, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with that. So, yeah, I mean, the, the workstation laptops especially, um, if they could hit that market putting eight core CPUs in a um, workstation laptop, that would be really, really good. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I could see that working out very, very well. Um, with the uh, gaming ones, they could also do quite well. But yeah, you said it right. The performance per watt will be the most interesting part of it. But the workstation laptop market actually isn't that um, good right now in terms of your choices. Uh, so I think that would be a good place for them to head to because the, you could make good money there. A lot of businesses need to buy them for various reasons, and um, they will just pay $5,000 for a workstation laptop. Yeah. So if they can chuck something like the 1800X in a laptop, uh, then, you know, the power draw might be, you know, pretty considerable. But, but if it's just going to stand a charger... And it's, you're going to have to just haul I around just, that brick all yeah. the time. Then I'm not a big fan would. of those laptops, man. Like two power bricks, and then it's really heavy on top of that. It's like, oh, this thing is not a laptop. If you put it on your lap, it'll literally kill your legs. It's that heavy. Mm. So it should yeah. be like a desk uh, semi-portable yeah. top. So Semi-portable. Anyway, <laughs> so, we can move on to the next topic, Destiny 2. Oh my God, Destiny Two, anybody? No, guys, judge, judge, oh. Destiny Two. <laughs> yes, I think Destiny Two gonna be awesome. Oh God. Okay, so, all right, Destiny Two, guys, it's coming out on PC as well, and apparently the pre-order date, at least on EB Games, is for eighth of September as well. So Destiny Two. We're looking like it's going to come out on the same day as it's coming out on PS4 and Xbox One. And the good thing about the PC and Destiny 2 will be that apparently we're getting uncapped frame rates with Destiny 2 on PC. Wow. Not only that, you've got 4K ultra wide support as well, 21 by 9 ultra wide support, adjustable yeah, cool. field of view. Uh, this is what I guess like I wanted to play Destiny on the PS4. My brother was ab he's a console fanboy. He's absolutely loving Destiny on the console. He has been for years. He tried to get me on it, and I was just like, I tried one of those mouse to PlayStation converter things, and it just worked terrible. Like it was like input lag, 30 FPS, and then like the mouse movements were like really weird. Like, it was just terrible. It was a whole tale. I was like, damn, I can't do this. I just can't do this. But Destiny 2, native out on the PC, it's going to be insane. They're optimizing it for PC as well, just like that with consoles. But this is going to be absolutely incredible. I think this is a game that will be met with a really positive reception because a lot of people have been to these sort of Destiny 2 events and they've seen it on console and it looks good on console. Apparently, it's rumored to be like, <clears throat> again, 30 FPS on console, which is a bummer. 
but apparently they've seen it on PC, they just can't record the footage, and they reckon it looks gorgeous. Like, Destiny 2 looks absolutely amazing on PC. So we've got uncapped frame rates. I think this could be a catalyst to pull a lot of people from console to PC. And the yes man going to be right there harboring everybody. Come over to PC, brother. Get over here. Here's all the gear you need. Let's start getting a better experience. And this is a game that I'm going to be getting into because I actually sort of like want to try something completely new. And I think like an MMO kind of FPS shooter would be something different to your World of Warcraft and Diablo 3 and what's some other MMOs out there? Give me some names. I mean, Diablo 3 is not an MMO. I don't want to get like politically correct in the comments like, Diablo 3 is not an MMO, you idiot. So I just, um, but yeah, what's some other games out there, Kev, that are MMO? So we've got Elder Scrolls Online. So, uh, so I don't play MMOs, so you probably know oh, me the name. Okay, so anyway, I do. It's going to offer a different experience. I think it'll be really awesome, and I can't wait for it. Uh, the actual, uh, the I think the PlayStation Four will carry the advantage of getting more exclusive content earlier, as opposed to the Xbox One and the PC. In terms of cross-platform PvP, I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, they reckon it's not going to happen. Uh, I'm hopeful that it will at least happen between Xbox One and PC. I think that would be a good catalyst to drive people over to Xbox One or PC from PS4. Uh, of course, I want more people coming over to PC because the more people on PC, the better and the better experience. So it really looks cool. Um, I'm actually thinking about pre-ordering it too because I'm just really awaiting it. I really will be doing like PC builds for it, optimization guides for it. Uh, it's one game. Oh. Yeah, I know, I know, man. I'm Ooh. I'm at that stage. Well, my brother says it was an excellent game. He said, "Look, if you're gonna pre-order a game, this is the game to pre-order." He's been hyping it up to me, so I might even say if he wants to go halves, he can use my computer occasionally when I'm not on it. He can play Destiny <laughs> 2. So I might even make a deal with my brother, guys. Hustling for life. Should do a Destiny so, 2 build, man. Do a Destiny yeah. well, 2 that's, that's use it. parts yep. build and then use parts and then build, new build. You. Yep, use parts build, new build. <laughs> um, there'll be a lot of Destiny. I'm I'm looking forward to this, so I really want to yeah. get into. So I guess I I want to play a new game as well, a new genre, because kind of a bit bored on some of the, the games that come out now. Uh, so this might be the game that I need in my life. Who knows? Let me know in the what comments. What about our Let Bray, me know in the comments. Though. Have you have you tried that? Yeah, Prey's just like RPG. Oh, okay. I haven't, I haven't played it at all. Okay. I had, I'd heard good things, but um, thought yeah. maybe if you wanted something different. Yeah, it's cool. Like I got to get into Prey more, of course, when I get some yeah. free time at the new studio. We're moving into the new studio in like a month. I'm hoping to get some free time once I get everything out. Like I'm in a shoebox at the moment, so it's kind of hard to do anything. But yeah, big plans, big goals, and yeah. So there's some other reasons why I think WCCF Tech uh, ran an article on why the console could have 60 FPS. It's just a black screen. I'll try and refresh it, but um, it could run on 60 FPS on the Scorpio and the PS4 Pro. So that's still out in the air. Yeah. But I think it's been confirmed to be 30 FPS. I think the actual developers have said it will be 30 F FPS. So uh, again, a lot of people on the consoles don't notice though. That's the interesting thing. We all like to laugh in that, but a lot of people that play that they'll be playing at 30 FPS and. Yeah. You'll come by, you'll be walking by and go like, oh, wow, that looks awful. And they'll turn around and they're like, well, it looks fine to me, you know? So, <laughs> you know, that some people are just fine with it. They don't actually care at all. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, but at the end of the day, it's just different strokes for different folks. It's not it's not a thing. Like, I'm not going to go hate on... I mean, I'll just say, yeah, it looks, ugh, it looks hideous, but I'm not going to tell that guy he's in the wrong. I'm just going to say, hey, how about just try it on the PC? See how you go. You got to think always yeah. think of it in a positive nature. Got to be a yes man. That's what you got to be. So we got here. Uh, we'll move over to Q and A. But of course, if you like the stream, like the content, like what it's all about, can head over to Patreon. Little as a dollar a month, and get access to a live monthly stream with Steve and I. So Steve from Hardware and Box, we do a monthly live stream, which will be coming from Computex this month. So head on over. We talk about nice. all things off topic, all things answer your questions, whatnot. So uh, we've got the Q and A. I had it up before, but now it's just uh, here. It is. So Q and A, guys. 
Dan here. Hey Dan, what's up? He's got a question. Have either of you dabbled in phase change cooling? No, but my friends have. Um, or even TEC. Uh, I like what what does that stand for again? I'm such a noob when it comes to extreme overclocking. Uh, as more of a daily oh, intended use than extreme overclocking. So uh, phase change, I couldn't do phase change simply because of the background noise, uh, especially because I, I use my main rig for editing videos, uh, backdrop. Um, it's always where I'm close by. So if I had a phase change going on while I'm recording videos and I've got, uh, yeah, I just couldn't, Im I just couldn't see it happening. Even though I love what phase change can give you, it can give you really good performance, uh, increases. Um, and do we have any horror stories? No, nah, not with, I, I really haven't touched on it other than having some friends who are extreme overclockers and they've touched on it. Um, there's no real big horror stories that I've got to report except just stuff just dying, which just happens. So no, like no things shorting out and blowing up. Um, so his wife left the chiller on overnight by accident. Ooh. And he woke up to ice all over my motherboard. And yes, it did survive, and it's still going strong. Oh, well, that's good. So if the chill is yeah. like, you know, if it's freezing uh, pure air, then it shouldn't be a problem unless you live near the beach. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure on that one. Haven't. <laughs> it's good that it still works, though. Glad the X58 motherboard works. Best advice would be to actually get a hairdryer on, like, low heat. So don't go turn it up too much, but get it on low heat where, you you know, you can't really burn your hand and then just blow that over and dry up all the uh, water. Make sure there's none in any of the components. So uh, number two is Kev. He really enjoyed your core comparison of the 1600X and the 6800K. And he did a comparison of his own. It was pretty poor. He said, no, oh, don't think of your own comparisons as poor. You gotta say, this is the best comparison out there. Do you think when considering <laughs> in value for money, how valid is the 3930K versus the 1600? I believe both systems had can be had for similar amounts of money um and who knows how badly it's been treated yeah Ooh. that's an interesting one i would just go with the 1600 i it, mean it's hard the to 39 beat, yeah the 1600 is such good value eh? i mean the the 3930k the cpu itself is still solid the old six core hmm. but it's the motherboard that you have to pair them with how dated is what is that's sandy all the way bridge. back that's, sandy bridge man yeah yeah so i mean i would go with the 1600 purely just because you get to go on you know either x370 or b thrifty so um be thrifty bro the that's thrifty right. be oh, thrifty that's where it's at yeah when we're talking so, yeah, value that's, for that's money that's right so yeah value for money yeah I mean, the, so. the 1600 is quite cheap to begin with. I mean, you might even find a second-hand one now that a few people are buying them. Uh, maybe some guy that's jumped up to a higher one or jumped ship or something. So, yeah, I would say that I would go with the 1600 personally. It gets you on the current platform, the current AMD platform as well, and that's good. A current motherboard with uh, nice things on it, USB 3.1 and all the rest of it. So, yeah, that's what I would go for. Plus, you have a better upgrade path as well. You got no upgrade yeah. path, so yeah. um, value for my I mean the sixteen hundred just with a B three a B thrifty. It's, it's hard to beat, man. It's so hard to beat. Even in the used price performance segment, it's a really hard combo to beat. You're getting like a really good CPU, a decent cooler with it, and then those B three fifty motherboards. They're insanely cheap. They're overclockable yeah. motherboards. I mean, I picked up one for like 70 US or 80 US or something like that because I got it for 100 AUD shipped on a discount on eBay, stuck a few little cheap MOSFET heat sinks on it, and it was still handling an R7-1700. So you can really get some good performance out of the Ryzen chips on not just the CPU lineup, but also the motherboards, the included cooler. Uh, so it's such a good value offering. And uh, next one, good here. Hey guys, I got an X99 motherboard that had some bent socket pins for 25 pounds. Ooh, nasty. Depends how bent they are. He's, uh, he's tried his best to bend the pins back into place, but need a CPU to test it. I've been looking at the engineering sample 
uh, E5 2630 uh, LV3, 1.8 gigahertz, 8 cores, 16 threads, or something similar. Would something like that be overclockable on the X99 chipset? B clock overclocking. And what sort of overclock do you think I'd get out of these? Uh, with the X99 chipset, chipset and B clock overclocking, I think depends on the motherboard, but even then you'll still only get like 5% by five megahertz on the B clock. So it's a base is a hundred megahertz, right? On these X99 chipsets. And so the, I know the, for instance, the front side bus option is disabled on any BIOS. I know it's disabled. So you won't be able to get that V3 um, overclocked via a front side bus overclock. But with the B clock itself, the base clock, uh, you probably get like five megahertz, 5% like actual stable, like 10 megahertz, you might be if you're lucky and you know what you're doing. You, again, you could get, again, it wouldn't be much. Uh, and even then the B clock is sometimes even the, the actual raw B clock adjustment is disabled depending on the motherboard. Uh, so mm. yeah, just be careful with that one. Also on that note of bent pins, I have had a seller sell me a motherboard with bent pins. I've bent them back and man, this thing looked perfect. It was like brand new after that. And it still didn't work. So I'm guessing <laughs> that some sellers, yeah, like serious, man, no no bull. I'm yeah. get, I, I, like, I've seen it all, man. I've seen it all when it comes to like PC parts. I'm guessing that this guy would have had a bricked motherboard, bricked it from overclocking or did something stupid on it, uh, bad BIOS flash, and he just like, motherboard's completely bricked. And so he's gone and bent a few pins and it, like deliberately bent a few pins and then sold it. Like, oh, okay, you know. <laughs> Someone will just buy it thinking they can bend the pins back and then I'll get some yeah. money for it. A quick quick cash grab. I mean, there's like this is what I got dealt. So don't be surprised if it doesn't work for 25 pounds. So, you know. That's, yeah, I mean, um, I, I get that. And I mean, would this be a cheap um, engineering sample CPU to buy though? Because, I mean, that is still a, what is it, an eight core core 16 thread 1.8 gigahertz is ah. extremely low clocks i mean i would just do my best to find yeah. out someone on a forum uh because you're in england 25 pounds i know a lot of the guys are really friendly there on the overclocking forums i'd just find someone who lives close by on the forums just say hey i know like overclockers.co.uk or there's some real you know um there's some really good overclocking forums where i'm sure someone would be like hey i live close by could i just test this cpu out and I'd just test the board out. That would be the best bet rather than buying a CPU or even just take it into a computer shop and say, hey, have you got a spare CPU? You could just drop in and test out this motherboard for us because, yeah, buying a chip like that is going to be practically useless unless you're running a server. That's like a server chip. So a server-grade chip, the E52630LV3. So low clock speeds. It'll perform terrible as a workstation CPU or in games. So... Yeah. There you go. That's just the Australian two cents. Kev, you got your New Zealand yeah. two cents? Um, well, not so much adding to, to this, but more um, someone was saying that we didn't, the show needs a bit more uh, interaction with the with the, the viewers, with the fans. So um, if okay, you guys yeah. want some interaction yeah, here, yeah, we'll... Well, here so, we'll we'll say, guys, now we'll, we'll say this. Let us right right in the chat if you're watching, uh, put what CPU you're running right now in your in your rig and what motherboard uh, you're using, and uh, we'll have a bit of a chat about that. How are you, Brian? What CPU are you running, and what motherboard are you running in uh, in your personal rig, and what do you do you like them? Okay, so I've got eighteen hundred X four. 0.025 yep. gigahertz uh, 64 gigabytes of ram i need that for video editing because i take a lot of footage and then i just cut the best parts out and of course that needs memory in itself uh, i've got the memory clock to 2933 megahertz uh, 1080 ti the aorus in there at the moment and it's overclocked as well performance is insane ultra wide 100 hertz 1440p gaming ultra settings is extremely good even though i don't get much time to game which is something that like i'd love to make some more time to just game i love gaming man gaming's awesome so um that's my rig at the moment what are you running for your main uh me i'm still on broadway so 6900k at 4.2 gigahertz and uh uh the msi x99a gaming pro carbon motherboard so the cpu's been good 
that eight core is crazy powerful, but compared to Ryzen now, it's pretty much I wouldn't recommend anybody to buy it. Uh, the motherboard's been decent. Not so much, I think, it's MSI's fault. It's just X99's always been buggy, and my one continues to be like that. So I will be upgrading. Um, I was going to save this announcement for a little bit later, but you guys may as well know. Uh, I will be changing, uh, upgrading to either uh, Skylake X or uh, Ryzen, depending on what happens with the i9s once we do all those videos. So I'll be... Um, weighing those two up and I'll go for whichever one I like out of those two so um, and reading your guys a lot of you are running quite cool things uh, FX8350 7700Ks yeah. 5820K oh well that's a nice yeah that's, nice that's one, one of the, that's a really good CPU even to yeah quite day. a few 5820s yeah. actually quite I mean, a few people running those oh, yeah. someone back on Sandy Bridge wow 2600K at 4.8 yeah, and that's the thing, and those and those guys and those and those are the guys who know price performance. They overclock and they know that it doesn't get much better than those CPUs, the six core twelve threads from back, you know, a few years ago, because they still perform extremely well in today's games and only better because those six core twelve threads is now being utilized. So those guys yeah. know what's up. Um yeah, I would interact more with the chat guys on the live stream. Sorry about that. It's just my internet. I literally don't have the download and upload speeds to have the live chat going with the live stream bar. Like, and that's why Kev has the chat open and he just monitors it and watches it. <laughs> this is how bad my internet is. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. Yeah. Oh. No, it's, it's still fine though, man. Everyone's um, enjoying <laughs> quite a few people. It's bad. Quite a few people here running Ryzen, which is good Give to see. Me. We're seeing 1600Xs, 1500Xs. I need an MBA. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. 1700. Strain internet. What else we got? It's bad, guys. I'm breaking Sucks, down eh? on stream. I'm breaking down on stream. I'm about to cry. It's that it's bad. Over here, man. NZ's yeah. good. No, I wouldn't but, go to uh, NZ, bro. It's, you don't get tech at all. Like, you get a little bit of tech. Yeah, well, you get even <laughs> less than Australia, but at least the internet's pretty good um yeah. but yeah quite a few people were one of the one of the good ones i saw was a 1500x with uh with a msi tomahawk b350 the b350 yeah. i haven't personally tested out that motherboard yet but everybody keeps telling me about it so it must be pretty good if everyone keeps going on about dude, it um like, i mean the tomahawk apparently is quite a good one like dude i'm finding the bottom of the barrel of zeus one that i got off ebay is good like I mean, I'm, I'm guessing, like, the Fatality was pretty good. Like, I mean, I've tried a few now. I've even got the Gigabyte one here, the AB350. I mean, all the, B3, 3, oh, all the B350s are performing really well. I mean, you know, like, yeah, I'm are. sure the MSI Tomahawk does a really good job too. Like, um, I actually asked MSI for that because I thought it was going to be a hard-hitting motherboard. Um, so they sent me over an X370 Carbon instead. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's the funny thing like a lot of the companies out there like you like i ask for the budget stuff all the time because it's what i'm more interested in like i'm more interested in the bargain stuff like the hard-hitting value for money stuff and a lot of times the companies will just send us out like the most expensive stuff and i'm kind of like uh, you know it, it's good like i'm sure it's good but my passion isn't there for the more expensive stuff as it is for the budget stuff you know, like I've got this really yeah. cool video coming where we're going to do cosmetics on a budget and it's going to be mainstream. Like anyone can buy these parts <laughs> and I'm going to look, oh God, what happened? Okay. Voice just died on me midstream, but going to look at the performance, like not the performance, there's no performance in cosmetics. Ugh. What's happening, guys? i got to end the stream soon, guys. got to get something to eat. <laughs> okay. So the no, I get what you're saying. No, you're you're going to see how far you can take it for your dollar. Yeah, exactly. In the cosmetics. Yeah. So we're going to get a tempered yeah, glass case, yeah. RGB kit, um, and we're going to see how much of a like extra money that would be to a, a real cookie cutter case and fans. And we're going to see that premium. And I'm hoping to bring it under $100 so you can get cosmetics for under 100 bucks. And then when that, you know, that girl comes over to your house, if you're a young guy, you can just say, look at this, as opposed to my budget pc my cookie cutter which i just built if i say look at that the girl will be like huh it's just a computer bro and if you get rgb 
tempered glass case and you say, look at that, she will then want to do things with you automatically just because <laughs> you've got that just because you've got that awesome case. It's just like back in the day when we were like um, growing up, bro, in high school. Uh, if you had a cool phone, chicks were giving you their number. Like, this is actually true. I remember I pulled out my Nokia. What was it 8310 or something? 83? What was that phone, the little one? And it came out. It the was so 3310? Awesome. No, it was, it was a, like a, it was a little one. There was a little one that came out. And I remember when they first came out, I got one. A lot of other people got one. Walking around like little ballers, you know, like we're 15 years old getting chicks numbers man that was how it was like and it worked it worked man you show them this phone if you showed them a brick they were just not interested they're like mm, staying away from this guy sheesh you would that? hope that maybe they'd like you for how you you, you were and not what phone you own but, the world's um, a shallow pr- but, place bro the world's a shallow place yeah oh, I, I i i suppose so but um one of the funniest things someone's running dual xeons x5650s oh, yeah. i think rock on um okay so that's quite interesting uh 56 70 a lot of people a lot of you guys running the uh 17 um the 1700s that's good to see guys that's a good good cpu maybe would have liked to seen a few more of you guys running those um 1600s also but uh yeah quite a few xeons and and uh, of course, KB Lakes as well on there. Nice motherboards you guys are running. Seems quite even with those of you who are running uh, Ryzen CPUs, uh, but an even split between um, uh, X370 and B Thrifty. Yeah. So that's cool as well to see. But um, no, good to good to see you guys. It's always cool to see what what CPUs you're running, and it seems like a lot of you guys are running in that sort of uh, value for money area you know 1600s 1700s and yeah. uh, other cpus like that and and then they've got the xeon guys in there as well and a few people running oh, this always love me a good well. xeon yeah. always love me a good xeon and guys we're going to do cosmetics on a budget as well so that's going to be coming to the channel as well cosmetics on a budget yeah. i got some cool videos coming looking at i guess you know with me i love to look at the price performance stuff all the time it's where the passion really lies and i guess that's where the, the used price performance came from it was just a pod like if you look back before the price performance stuff i had all these theoretical builds hitting the channel that were always cookie cutter always cookie cutter i remember people would be telling me like dude you got to get a fractal design case or you got to get a corsair case and i'd be like no nah, just get a banger like save your money for yeah. the next build <laughs> just get a banger yeah and then you can go down and get a burger chips and a coke for 10 bucks so instead of having to eat baked beans oh what's wrong with the baked beans bro bro you get tired after eating it every day it, it's rough <laughs> <laughs> it's brutal man it's brutal but that's what yeah guys patron plug yeah patron plug baked beans one dollar a month you can help me get the cheese in my baked beans and you guys know how good cheese is come on like no i don't i haven't met a single person even if they're a vegan they still respect cheese. Yeah. yeah. I, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, in the West, anyways. <laughs> yeah. I don't so. think you'll find much t- cheese in Taiwan. Yeah. What are you saying in the chat? I've loaded up the chat now, by the way. I've loaded up the chat. I can see what's going on. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dr. Psychology. Spikeology. He hates cheese. Oh, Jimmy O. Two bucks, man. Cheers, brother. Cheers, man. So yeah, we're gonna interact yeah, with the live stream. We'll go live. Uh, if it drops out, guys, it's just my uh, my internet. So sorry about that. But I have the live chat stream loaded up, and um, yeah, this is awesome. I love you guys so much. You know, more vids yeah. of your dad, man. He funny, Brian. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, we're gonna get Dad Man on. Like, Dad Man can't. He's. We're gonna do a video with him in it soon, of course. Uh, we're gonna interact Dad Man more into the channel, but he's like, he's on and off, man. Like, sometimes he'll be funny when he wants to be funny, but then sometimes he'll just be like, I don't know, off in his own world, man. Um, talking about like getting this car from Sydney, that's like, you know, it's been overclocked and whatnot and um yeah he just he goes off on crazy tangents soon but hey if you guys want to see the crazy tangent stuff let's it's funny it's always funny man when dad man around it's always funny around here it's always good he always has a laugh 
but sometimes the jokes are a little bit too much for the for i guess the majority of you well he is a builder <laughs> like okay the history behind my dad is he's a builder all his life yeah he's got his own building license he's a builder born and bred builder man it's in his veins and now if you guys have ever worked with tradies before especially in australia like what i don't know what it's like in the states or the uk but if you're an australian you're working with tradies man wow like it, the conversation will quickly turn to sex that's the first thing or money they're like the two things that will quickly turn to nowadays it might be drugs as well so <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> oh, when i was I yeah, when no. I was in the trades, it was yeah. You you're kind of right to a certain degree. Um, yeah. The, the yeah, I, I do know what you mean. It's not. <laughs> and yeah, it's, you wouldn't want to record that and put yeah. it on YouTube. The and way it, the guys carry on is generally. Um, and every there's second, a, there's every a second of word's a curse word. So. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of swearing there. It depends which yeah. one. Generally, generally, um, in automotive, like what I was in, it's it's a bit more contained. Um, because there's usually customers around and things, but uh, but I can't imagine builders would be very contained. Oh yeah, well, he's, uh, when well, he's uh, alone some, site. <laughs> yeah, well, someone asked him what kind of um, what kind of build. He's open license build builder. Like he can build reinforced uh, concrete steel framed homes and whatnot. Like he's you know, and um, I've I've worked out with him when I was a kid. Like going up in my late teens, early twenties, I did a stint, you know, a few stints with him. And I tell you what, concreting, man, damn, that's a hard trade, eh? really hard trade yeah. uh if you do you know concreting man i got a lot of respect for concreters eh? that's one of the hardest trades there is out there and your back will eventually go on you so um what do we get asked so uh yeah will i change my name at two hundred thousand subs to tech yes city and i've said yes i'm a man of my word i've said it in the comments it will go back to tech yes city and i'm looking like you know the growth has been slow lately i don't know what's been going on with youtube their algorithm's crazy um sometimes like i think they're favoring people who upload every day and they upload longer than 10 minute videos i think that's the consensus but it sucks because i don't really want to change my formula people come to my videos for the d low you know they get the down low and then that's it their day's fulfilled i don't know so like growth has been slow lately because of that those changes i believe and yeah i've said to my viewers 200k man it's happening we're going back to tech yes city and that's what's happening we're going to change everything change the whole formula it's going back to being a little bit more electrifying um electrifying that's it tech jar jar city man it's it's all going to be happening guys it's all going to be crazy so 200k i want to do a giveaway as well like a whole pc giveaway uh, I got some real cool giveaways coming as well. Like, I'm not just going to do a giveaway for the viewers. I actually want to do some other things locally as well to help out the community and stuff like that. Because, you know, even though I'm not like, I'm making like barely a, like I'm probably just making over a minimum wage at the moment. Like, even though I'm making that, there's still people less fortunate than me. And so if I get, especially the viewers, like I had a viewer send me some parts. And so I've still got to do something with that. And I actually want to build that and then give it away locally or something. So we'll see how it goes. There's a lot in the works. So yeah, and of course I the mean, Windows said 10. You can, yeah, yeah. You, you could make uh, daily videos of you um, doing the dishes. Yeah, you could make them about your dishwasher or yeah. And guys, we can do, have uh, like da yeah, daily vlogs on dishwashers, um, cooking food. I actually, I wouldn't do cooking food, man. Like I seriously, I just never watched that personally. I think there would be no passion there. Uh, maybe overclocking your dishwasher. That, <laughs> passionate. Like, yeah. Like passionate dishwashing. <laughs> yeah. But what about overclocking your dishwasher? Like how cool would that be? <laughs> like guys maybe. can finish the job in 20 minutes instead of 25 minutes. I think the internet would go crazy over that. Over OC your dishwasher. So, would you enjoy Brian taking out all the shelves of the dishwasher and then sitting inside the dishwasher and turning it on? Oh man, you what, where do you get some of these these <laughs> ideas? Like, how does that even come to your head? That's like, I wouldn't even fit in the dishwasher, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just so mean. Me and Steve have been talking about. Yeah, that, actually, a dishwasher cooled PC that'd be awesome because like all the parts are apparently <laughs> coming out with water resistance. Nowadays, so you just like have your sue cable like hanging in there to all your parts, have the dishwasher go and just like spinning like shit everywhere, and <laughs> that'd be funny. Like I do want to do some it, crazy stuff. 
So. Do, do you like it, Brian, when the dishwasher's just finished its uh, cycle when you and you open it up and all that steam rushes out and it all goes all over your face and stuff? Do you? No, because I feeling? I actually just hand wash, dude. Like, um, <laughs> I the dishwasher we've got at the moment's a piece of crap. Like, when we're gonna move places soon and we get a new <laughs> dishwasher, but like, I hate it when you open a dishwasher and there's still like picks of food on your plate. You're like, why do I even use this thing? So <laughs> that's like <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, it's it's, uh, it's all right, Brian. I think you need to go out make it make a dishwasher blog, man. Go out try find a find yeah. a nice one that really tickles your fancy, if you know what I mean. Ask them if it gets extra soapy, you know, if there's lots of steam when you open it up, oh, so you can get man. that nice steam blow in your face, you know. Kev, I, don't you have a problem. girl? Don't you have a girlfriend, dude? <sighs> what what's the point? like you're the one like talking about you're going down that tangent usually it should be me i'm the guy who's single at the moment i should be going down that tangent talking about soap no, it's, and just, stuff. no it's, uh, it's just funny man because steve just gets so rustled by me talking about dishwashers <laughs> uh it's just something about a day like it you just can't handle you know when i start talking about a soapy dishwasher and stuff he, oh, man. he's I've, not I've, a big okay. fan I, of i've got a question yeah. for you you got to answer it 100 percent truthfully you got you gotta promise me. Do. Okay, okay. Have you ever been to a soap land before? I don't know what that is. What is it? That's where they massage you up and you know, you get stuff and stuff done. Oh, no, I never <laughs> been to one of those places. Okay. <laughs> soap land, dude. Soap land. Maybe so. maybe sitting inside the dishwasher is right. a similar sort of thing. I'll book you a ticket um, for your yeah, for your birthday, bro. I'll book you a ticket into a soap land. Oh, can you put me a ticket for the extra yeah. large dishwasher? Yeah. You probably get burned pretty badly. Isn't the water pretty hot inside those yeah, things? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a hundred degrees, man. Like that's how they that's how they work. You know. Uh, fun man. No, that's good. So, um, yeah, I guess guys, we'll uh, wrap up the show. But uh, what are you looking forward to the most at uh, Computex? Brian, as we wrap up the show. Ooh, I, I'm looking forward to Baker, seeing... Like, so. This is the, this is going to sound crazy. Like, I'm actually... This is why I'm going there a few days early. I'm actually looking to the freelance stuff. Like, I'm of course, I want to see the, the event, but I'm looking forward to seeing Taiwan. Like, really looking forward to it, hey? Because it'll just be a different culture, different atmosphere. The event itself, like, I've been to PAX before, and it's you, you get over it in, like, two days. Um, like the first day you're like, wow, this is so cool. Second day you're like, oh yeah. Okay. Where, what haven't I seen that I saw yesterday? And then third day you're like, yeah, oh, I'm over it. Like, so yeah, Computex should be awesome. I'm looking forward to the announcements from the tech companies and seeing like what the big products are and seeing if there's really all the cool stuff there. But other than that, I'm also looking forward to just seeing Taiwan, man. I really want to see it. Like a lot, everyone that, every one of my friends, which this has got to be a good thing. Everyone said they've loved Taiwan. And now this is people yeah. who have been to the UK. Oh, here's dad, man. Here, dad, I'm on stream. People want to, quick, come here. Yeah, people want to see like, um, so dad man's here, guys. What do you want him to say? So we're just, we're about to finish off the live stream. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. They want. Let's see you later, alligator, or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So. Okay. They, they want to know if you're a big fan of dishwashers. <laughs> Have a good yeah. day. The rest. Uh, of <laughs> they want to know if you're a big fan of dishwashers. Uh, well, partial, partial, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the chat. See, there's a chat there. You can see it. There. Hey, Dad. Like, Dad, man. The chat's going crazy for you, mate. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. He, so you're a rock star now, aren't you? Oh, big one. Yeah, so Dad Man's a rock star, <laughs> guys. Yeah, now tell him about the, the van. Like, you go tell him about, don't, no, yeah. No, look, I'll tell him next time because I'm in a rush. I've just picked oh, okay. up a few things. And yeah, I'll all right, mate. Okay, see you, bro. All right, see you, mate. Love you. Bye. All right. <laughs> hey? The Dad Man's a yeah. bit impartial to the dishwasher. Oh, well, he's, yeah. Seems. Yeah, he's uh, his Dad Man. So he, he prefers a yeah. manual sort of experience to an automatic one, it seems. Oh, mate, he's a hands-on type of guy, mate. So I'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so if any, if any of you guys ever meet up in real life and have a beer with me and Dad, man, you just, yeah, you've got to be, like, anti-politically correct because some of the stuff he says is, is a bit, you know, but it's funny, man. Like, that's what I mean. Like, at the end of the day, who's right or wrong if you're having a laugh? And that's why I'm so, like, anti-politically correct is because I just, I see the funner side of life. I really, 
if you're like stress and like i was talking to this to the neighbor the other day like this chick across the road we're just having a chat about it and like stress cheryl. i think no nah, not cheryl uh her name was anna <laughs> so uh, we're talking like yeah we're, we're talking about this and it's like stress is a modern day thing like we've got you know like back in the day you only had primitive stress right where you had to go out and hunt and get food and it was very basic nowadays look at all the stress that we've got in our lives man it's way too much and in ways i just hate stress i'm anti-stress because i think it's the worst thing in life when you've just constantly your life is bombarded with stress and so mm. like for me yeah. i try to really go anti-stress and that's why the live streams never never on time guys sorry about that it's just like i really am a stress-free guy i like to just i just enjoy the like stress-free uh side of things so if you're doing I mean, if you're doing youtube properly i think you shouldn't hmm. be that stressed about it because you set your own schedule you can do things at your own pace and um and make whatever do whatever type of video you want do whatever testing you have there can be a bit of stress with you know dealing with companies sometimes but yeah. you don't need to take deals and and you can usually be they're, they're usually not too bad um in terms yeah. of giving you a lot of leeway with what you want to do so hmm. no i think doing youtube can be quite uh depending on how you want to do it if you, if you want to be real hard on yourself and say i'm going to make a new tech video every day then you'll probably be stressed trying to crank out videos like there's no but tomorrow, even then but, um, but that's the thing like when you do that like the quality of my videos will go down like i've got to be in the zone and i think that's what i mean yeah, it's more you about be having fun and yeah. making the videos you want to you you would want to watch as well that's the main thing so yeah. i mean yeah it's it's good i mean you got to and you got to de-stress as well someone in chat said dishwashers equal no stress i mean i can't agree with you more it's just yeah. you know it's good stress relief so dishwashers equal life um but yeah so <laughs> yeah. that's that's why i love that, you guys that, in the it. chat like you guys in the chat are just right on the money it's like yeah political career is just wrong it's just stressful having to walk on eggshells you know and yeah so i mean i think people just need to be chill like if someone says something it's just a word like i don't know man i guess i got raised in a different sort of more of a country-based sort of family and well, kiwis kiwis just... and aussies are a bit different though we got very um it's a very like we we should be able to say whatever we like type mentality i i see it mm. as there's 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 certainly points of political correctness that may be a good but the a lot of times it does seem like it's just a good way to shut people up and stop a conversation from ever happening but kiwis and aussies are generally like our politicians and that i know you americans always get you know you can't handle it when when they say stuff but it's just our cultures here we're, we're a lot different we're but very that's the laid thing, back that's cultures the, that's the we crazy thing though when say. you say like you americans very that's very generalizing though dude I've, I, I've met a lot of americans and especially canadians who have the same mentality as we do down under man like oh yeah certainly like, certainly i mean i mean a lot of by comparison to here so, or in australia yeah so that's, i know that's, i know that's, that's like that's that's what i mean I, I don't understand like i don't really care like you but know, yeah this it's is... just a different it's different things for for yeah. for everybody but um but yeah that that's the that's the thing so but uh, people uh, someone said teddy makes teddy makes life stress-free yeah he, he certainly helps but i think the, yeah. the dishwasher as you guys you should oh one thing you'll like in uh taiwan brian the food man you'll you'll love that yeah rough if you on. like that type of food apparently it's some of the best in asia you'll have yeah. Um, go get so. yourself some stinky tofu, man. That'll yeah. really. Yeah, right. buddy. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll live stream for a little bit longer. Talk to me, guys, with topics. Let's br bring up some topics if you want this to keep going. We'll just keep going with this live stream. Why not? You know, I'm, I'm in the zone. Kev's in the zone. He's finally uh, breaking out of the chains, man. See, this is what I want you to be more during the live stream. Throw some banter at me, dude. Throw some soap at me. Just don't expect me to pick it up. <laughs> oh. <So> soap. <laughs> some soap eh <laughs> yeah throw some soap at me just to, don't expect me to pick it yeah. up some dishwashing powder throw yeah. it all over you yeah uh well, <laughs> yeah so the thing is what games do you play at the moment okay so i'm gonna be getting destiny 2 i got the pre-order here like man ebay's just get some free uh at ebay not e ebay ebay is good but eb games ebay well, ebay's sort of good and bad but eb games getting free exposure here destiny 2 is getting free exposure here but uh, can someone call me a Destiny 2 sellout? That's what I want to get called in the comments. So, yeah, <laughs> they've accepted no cash, um, but I'm a sellout. So, 
sold out for nothing. <laughs> sold out for nothing, guys. Sold out to Destiny 2 for absolutely nothing. So, <laughs> uh, RX 480 BIOS flash. Oh, man, I'd have to take a look at that. If I do it, okay, like if I do the BIOS flash, right, you guys are going to see the ugly as well because I'm not going to make a only positive video on it. And my feelings are with the RX 480 to 580 flash that it won't work on a lot of the cards. Um, especially the 480 I've got, which is like a literally the first one released on day one. So, uh, yeah, I'll do it though. And then we'll just see. If it doesn't work, I'll be like, okay, it doesn't work, uh, but this might work. An RX 580 that's sort of like downclocked custom BIOS. Um, and if it's just that much of a hassle to do. Because it's a funny thing, right? We talk about custom BIOSes and being flashed. And some of these, some people make it sound like it's just so easy. Oh man, you just get a custom BIOS flashed on there. And it's like half the time you do that and even you match up the checksum values and the BIOS still doesn't work. So yeah, I mean, depends, right? I'll give it a go though. So anyway. Yeah. So, yeah but yeah, we're going to, we're going to have a look at that. I will take a look at undervolting after Computex and yeah, some of the content has been a bit rushed lately because I have to get ready for Computex. Yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow night and I do want to get like a windows 10 optimization guide out. I think that's like people have been just yelling on Facebook, Twitter optimization guide now windows 10 and what it's going to be, it's going to be actually a lot different to the previous optimization guides where I'm pretty much going to recommend you just re like you, you update, you save all your important files and you reset your whole system because I don't see any other way. There's just, I've now done this update on two different PCs and two different PCs have just had problems. Like, oh man, it's crazy the problems these things have had. So like Steam, like I, the last time I updated a creator's update, Steam wouldn't even load up crazy yeah crazy crazy yeah crazy. no so crazy. we got a comment from yep. uh okay. samus hydra said gtx dishwasher oh. plus ryzen r7 dishwasher equals best hardware ever See? yeah samus so if you guys yeah. yeah yeah man so yeah. if you guys like um like dishwasher hardware you need to head over to our buddy uh steve at hardware unbox and go hit him up in his comment section and be like steve which dishwasher do you recommend or steve um what's your favorite dishwasher and uh to, you know which is the steamiest and which yeah. is the soapiest and and steve's a big fan so he'll he'll comment back saying well he'll give you guys some great recommendations and you can go out and get yourself a really nice dishwasher sanus um, sanus hydra big, he'll be a yeah. big fan sanus you gotta <laughs> promise me man you'll go harder in the comments i was lolling at some of the arguments you were having with some of the <laughs> guys in that 1060 verse 580 video Sanus, promise me you'll comment on every video that I do from here on in. Because I, um, I kind of, sometimes I like, as much as I don't like being, uh, the hate coming directed towards me, you kind of sit back and you like enjoy a good argument every now and then when you're not involved. You just sit back with the popcorn, right? I guess that's where the, where the uh, saying comes from. So Sanus, you got to go at it, dude. <laughs> so i had i had people messaging me after that video and they're like dude sanus hydra's going off the chain in the comments and, <laughs> and uh, anyway so yeah so yeah. someone said uh brian do a yeah. dishwasher review at two hundred thousand subscribers okay guys all right all right we hit 200k all right we hit okay guys hit two hundred thousand subscribers changing it back to tech yes city and we're doing a dishwasher review. That's what's going to happen, okay? <laughs> Promise you, okay? And we're going to see if we can overclock the brand new dishwasher and void the warranty. Why not? Yeah, man, overclock like, the dishwasher. Let's, man, yeah. get that, get those temps getting up there. Get the speed up. You know, shave like a like a yep. minute or two off the wash cycle. Man, it'd be crazy. And man, I'm I'm going to put in like I'm going to put it through a stress test. We're going to have like pizza cheese like hardened for days on the plate yeah like i'm serious we're gonna put it through a stress test like old sauce that's yeah, been man. on the plate for a week we're gonna do a proper stress test and then after that we are going to if it works properly it'll get a good review if it doesn't work properly i'm gonna just i'm gonna rage quit be like look let's get another dishwasher so <laughs> yeah yeah 300k yeah. do a name change to dishwasher yeah. yes city yeah Ah, uh, that'd be fantastic. But um, but uh, yeah. Hey, uh, let's right. uh, let's uh, round up the show, man, because yeah. I gotta I gotta get this right. 580 versus 1060 oh, video done. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's really fun, down. guys. We had a great time. Kev's got to do a showdown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah All right, guys. Yep. Sanus. Oh, he's gonna keep commenting. Cool. 
Awesome. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Love you all. We're going to catch you guys next week in another... Str- I don't know how next week's going to work, though, dude. I'll be in Taiwan, so I'm not sure how it's going to work. Okay, I'm just We might need that- to skip that week, eh? Yeah, maybe. Like, I'll announce, on, I'll announce on Twitter how it all works and stuff because I'll actually try and live stream with Steve for the Patreon stream. Yep. And we'll, okay, if, cool. that, if that works... That's what I mean. If that doesn't work out, like, you know, the internet could be bad at the hotel we're staying at or something like that but i'm imagining taiwan has some of the best if not the best internet in the world so shouldn't be a problem it's pretty good yeah yeah and um so yeah hopefully i'll bring this mic over with me too it's such a good little combo you can just plug it in and you've got amazing voice quality yeah so all right guys we'll catch you guys next time okay and you guys have been awesome this week sorry about the dropout as well yeah actually it wasn't my it was telstra all right. <laughs> peace out for all now right, guys. guys peace out for now bye